Hey Pokemon fans, I'm Jay Witz, and welcome to today's Pokemon Fact of the Day. Today's fact has been much requested, and it's definitely a confusing subject. Today, we're going to talk about something that's been within the Pokemon games since their inception, but it's kind of hard to figure out if you don't know what you're looking for. Today, we're going to talk about EVs and IVs, and exactly what they mean within the terms of the Pokemon franchise. In the world of Hopefully Pokemon, now. there are two distinct routes of playing, one of them unfamiliar to most. The first is simply playing through the game, capturing Pokemon, defeating the game's trainers, and exploring the world. The second is a deep world of numbers, statistics, and algorithms geared to train Pokemon to their maximum potential, higher than the traditional level system would have you believe. Today we'll explore through this second route through two major Pokemon concepts that are confusing to many, effort values and individual values, or EVs and IVs. For starters, here's a very rough outline of what the two terms mean. EVs, or effort values, are the equivalent of Pokemon's strength and conditioning. As a Pokemon battles, it grows stronger in specific stats over time, even when the game doesn't say you've leveled up. For example, in real life, if you run every day of your life, you're going to get better and better at running over time. IVs are the equivalent of Pokemon genetics. Every Pokemon is born with a different set of stat modifiers that make them different from each other, and ultimately make some Pokemon better than others straight from birth. To go back to the running example, no matter how much you run, even if it's the only thing you do in your entire life, there's an extremely small chance you'll ever beat Usain Bolt in the foot race. Why? Because no matter how hard you work, he's working just as hard and is also a genetic godsend. For many, simply understanding IVs and EVs is all you might have been looking for. But for those willing to wade through the endless pit of numbers, equations, and explanations, let's dive a little deeper into both these stat categories. EVs are the easier of the two to explain, because they're the factor that's easiest to control. When you catch or breed a Pokémon, they start as a blank slate, and for every Pokémon you defeat in battle, you slowly gain stats similar to the creatures you've beaten. You know how in Dark Souls your character absorbs the souls of their defeated enemies in order to grow more powerful? In a sense, the same thing happens in Pokémon. EVs differ slightly in the first two generations from the rest. In those games, you have the potential to maximize your EVs in every single stat, giving you a solid boost in everything. In the early generations, your maximum EV boost for each stat is 65,535 points. In the first two generations only, you gain points in each stat equal to a Pokémon's base stats. For example, Ditto has an even distribution of 48 base stats across all categories. In order to maximize a Pokémon's training from start to finish using Ditto's alone, they'd have to knock out 1,366 Ditto's. Vitamins like protein, iron, and calcium can be eaten for 2,560 points to a single stat, but they only work until the first 25,600 points of training, or about one-third of your maximum potential per stat. Instead of large, complicated numbers, EVs today are now broken up into a nice system that's easy to understand when you take the time to learn it. Instead of dropping their base stats into multiple categories, Pokémon are now assigned point values for the EVs that they drop. For every four EVs that you gain in a single stat category, you will gain a single stat point. There isn't anywhere in the games themselves where you can find this information, but Bulbapedia provides a nice searchable list, and I'll include it in the description below. Instead of being able to max out your stats in every category like in the first two generations, Pokémon are limited in two ways. One, you can only obtain a maximum of 510 total EV points, and two, no single stat can have more than 255 EV points. Because you only gain one stat point per four EVs, it's useless to add more than 252 EVs into a single category. Most competitive battlers will pick two stats that they want to maximize at 252 EVs each, and then spend the leftover EVs to add a single point to a third stat. Because of the way the numbers work, you can only effectively use 508 of your 510 total points to boost stats. However, if you hit all 510, you can get a ribbon. So that's, uh, neat, I guess. So, how do you get all these points? When a Pokémon is knocked out, they give anywhere from 1 to 3 EV points to any Pokémon that were involved in battle, including those involved in EXP share. The amount dropped depends on the Pokémon's type. For example, knocking out a Hoppip would give your Pokémon 1 EV in Special Defense, while knocking out a Charizard would give you 3 EVs in Special Attack. Also returning are Vitamins, which work in a very similar way to the first generation. 
They provide 10 EVs per stat category, but they're only usable up through a Pokémon's first 100 EVs in a single category. There are several new items from Generation 3 onward that affect EVs as well. The Macho Brace, when held, gives the held Pokémon double the amount of EVs when used in battle. Some of the Pokéblock Berries can also be fed to Pokémon to decrease EV stats by 10 at a time while also boosting happiness, if for some reason you wanted to start a battle with a clean slate. In Generation 4 onward, new Power Trading items can be held to increase EVs for a single stat by 4 for each Pokémon knocked out. These are generally the best items to EV train with, but they're usually pretty pricey purchasables from the Battle Tower. Only in Black and White 2 did these items recently become easier to find. Also added to Generation 5 are Wings, which add one EV to a specific stat and can even break past the 100 limit of vitamins. However, at just one EV each, you're going to have to do a lot of wing hunting before they start getting useful. And finally, having Pokerus doubles the amount of EVs you can get, and also doubles the bonuses of Macho Brace and the power items. I did an entire video on Pokerus, which you can find right here. All in all, this stuff can get a little confusing, right? So to wrap up EVs, let's go through a hypothetical training session to explain how it all works together. Let's say I want to EV train my Blissey. Because Blissey only appears through Chansey Evolution by Happiness, chances are I do a lot of the actual training as Chansey first. Blissey already has by far the highest HP in the game, so I'm not going to need to touch that much. Its attack, speed, and special attack are so low that boosting them would probably be a lost cause. So what I want to do is the following. Max out the EVs for defense, max out the EVs for special defense, and throw the final scraps on the HP, making Blissey the biggest wall possible. For the sake of showing how multiple factors can go into place, let's say I have unlimited money and buy 10 zinc and iron, feeding them all to my Chansey. That gives me 100 EVs in both defense and special defense to start, but I can't get stats by eating any more past that. Now that I need 152 more from both stats, it's time to hit the weights. The power belt goes on first, giving me 4 extra EVs in defense for each knocked out Pokémon. Kakuna and Metapod are easy to find and provide 2 defense EVs each, so I'll knock out 25 with the belt for 150 total EVs, and then knock out one without the belt for the last 2. Then comes the Power Band, and a Pokémon that gives special defense. Tentacruel gives one, and is pretty common to find while surfing. And if you occasionally run into Tentacruel, you can take two. You could also knock out Hoppips. You know, if you want to help rid the world of the worst pest ever known to mankind. However you decide to do it, as long as you keep track of what you're earning and land on 152, you're solid. Finally, for the last four in HP, just knock out two Pokémon that give two HP EVs, there's a ton of these, and you're solid. It might take a lot of planning, research, and battles, but it's way better than the thousands of battles required in the first generation, and your Pokémon will have hit its maximum training potential. In some games, your EV stats won't add until you've leveled up. This can be fixed in any generation by dropping your Pokémon into the PC, then pulling them back out. In black and white, however, EV stats are added after every battle, so it seems like Pokémon is taking small steps to make EV training even easier. If you're curious about what kinds of EVs are often used in competitive battling, the website Smogon.com provides a lot of different strength combinations that work well. Next up are IVs, and to be perfectly honest with you guys, they're possibly my least favorite aspect of Pokémon, specifically because of how tedious, frustrating, and time-consuming it all is. IV breeding is a beast of a topic that would require its own series of videos. Let's start slowly, and you'll understand why I hate this stuff so much. Like I said, IVs are Pokémon genetics. They provide stat modifiers to a Pokémon from birth, and they can never be changed in a Pokémon after they've been hatched or caught. In Generation 1 and 2, these stats are called determinate values, and they're slightly different. They go from 1 to 15, and determine a variety of things by their numbers beyond stats, such as whether or not your Pokémon will be shiny, which gender your Pokémon is, and what letter your unknown will be in the alphabet. This changes in Generation 3, where Pokémon information beyond stats is determined by a different random number called a personality value. You can learn more about that here in my video about shiny Pokémon. In Generation 3 and on, these stats go from 1 to 31, and unlike EVs, which have a restriction on them to prevent perfect distribution, IVs can be perfect. Hitler would be pleased to know that there is in fact an Aryan race of Pokémon, those with IVs of 31s all around. Great! And let me tell you, Finding those perfect IVs is an absolute nightmare. Let's start off with the basics. 
how do you even find out what your IVs are? First things first, you need to know what your Pokemon's nature is. While it's not exactly a part of IVs, natures are stat modifiers that Pokemon have from birth. Aside from five neutral values, each nature increases one stat by 10%, while decreasing the other another 10%. For that Blissey we were talking about earlier, Calm is a good choice because it increases special defense, something good, while decreasing attack, a stat that was already so low that there's no harm in dropping it lower. After you know your nature, all you need to do to calculate the Pokemon's IVs are... <laughs> Put it away! Put it away! So let's say that you, like myself, hate math. You can find a few programs that will do the calculations for you, such as this one from Cypokes.com. The worst part about these equations is that they're approximate until your Pokémon hits a high level, so you might have to level a breed of Pokémon a bit before you're even confident about what its IVs are. You can also get general estimates of your Pokémon IVs by talking to specific characters, depending on your game. Most people you talk to are pretty vague, but the best you can find is the Judge and Gear Station in Generation 5 after beating Team Plasma, who will evaluate your Pokémon with a handful of statements based on your IV stats. It's not perfect, but it's at least worth checking out if you don't want to input all the information into an IV calculator. IVs and natures can be passed on to sibling Pokémon through breeding. Like I've said, breeding is an insanely complicated topic when it comes to IVs and natures, but we'll save that for another day. All I can say is, it isn't pretty. Your odds of breeding Pokémon with 1-3 to three perfect IVs aren't terrible, but perfection is a whole nother story. Let's say that by some celestial chance, that you found two Pokémon with perfect IVs and bred them together. Your odds of breeding a third Pokémon with perfect IVs? One in about 60,000 offspring. That's... Uh, gonna be a lot of babies. I know that there's an even more complicated method of abusing the game's random number generator to get very strong IVs legally without the use of a cheating device, but that's another lengthy process that can take a while to understand. Without any kind of abuse, though, getting perfect IVs through the game's normal engine is near impossible. The final thing IVs determine are both the attacking type and power of hidden power when given to a Pokémon. We've had just about enough math for me to handle for this episode, so I'm not going to go into the specifics about how to calculate it here, but I'll leave a link in the description on how to calculate it yourself if you're interested. While I don't love everything about them, the concept of EVs and IVs is pretty perfect. At the most basic level, Pokémon is a simple to understand game that's playable at the youngest ages. But deep in its core is a complicated system, intricate enough for even the most hardcore RPG gamers. Hopefully now, when your friends talk about EVs and IVs, you know what the heck they're talking about. But because this was just a surface level explanation of the terms, if you want to find more, check the description and you can learn more about EVs and IVs in full detail. And let me tell you, it's... it's a pretty big burden. I'm kinda on the fence on the whole EV-IV thing. I think that they're cool that there's a deeper level of exploration that you can go through the Pokémon games, but I mean, when I say deep, it's really deep. Sometimes it's just a little bit too much for me. I just like playing my Pokémon games just to play them. Level my guys, beat the Elite Four, and I'm pretty much happy with that. But what about you guys? Have you tried EV training? Like it? Hate it? Never even heard of it? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, thanks for watching my video, and stay tuned for more Pokémon Fact of the Days. Peace! Boom, 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 boom,